Welcome to Oil and Gas. Let's talk about what happens when you forget the exception. That is, you try to convey your property or a fraction of your property, but you forget to say that part of your property is still owned by somebody else. There's a fraction of your property owned by someone else. You were supposed to accept that, but you forgot to. So let's talk about the Dewey rule. The Dewey rule is really, it's one of those things, sort of like the rule against property, uh, perpetuities and property, where it is a little difficult to understand, but when you do understand it, it's a sign that you really understand oil and gas. There have been a number of Texas oil and gas bar portions that have mentioned the Dewey rule. And uh, we'll talk about why these cases arise, how you can avoid them, and if you're stuck with one, how you deal with it. So the Dewey rule is named after this case, Dewey versus PV Moore Lumber. It's from Texas, 1940. It's on page 591 of your textbooks. What happened is that Dewey owns the surface and just one half of the minerals. Then Dewey sells this land, it conveys it to Miller Link by a warranty deed. So that warranty deed says, I really own what I say I own, but that warranty deed does not accept the one half of minerals that Dewey doesn't own. Instead, it just says that Dewey reserves an undivided one half interest in and to all minerals with no mention of the one half of minerals not owned by Dewey. So what does Miller Link get? Well, first ask yourself, what does Miller Link think it's getting? It looks at this deed. This deed seems to show that Dewey owns the property. It says that Dewey has the, the power to convey that property. And Dewey says it's just reserving a one half mineral interest for itself. So what did Miller Link think it was getting? It thought it was getting a one half mineral interest. Miller Link thought, oh, Dewey is reserving one half for himself. Miller Link gets the other one half. Problem is there's not 100% of this property to go around. One half of it is owned by someone else. So the court says, well, look, if there's not enough to satisfy what the deed purports to grant to both parties, we are going to give preference to the granted interest until it's satisfied. So who's the granted interest? That's Miller Link. Miller Link thinks that it's getting a one half mineral interest. So it's gonna get its one half mineral interest. So where is that gonna come from? Well, it's gonna come from Dewey. Dewey still has a one half mineral interest. It has to transfer that all to Miller Link and it's left with nothing. So basically, obviously the owner who's not there, the third party gets to keep its one half minerals. This transaction between Dewey and Miller Link can't affect it. But Miller Link gets the full half that's left over because that's what it thought it was getting from the deed because it conveyed with a warranty deed. Dewey is left with nothing. And now this is an open question. What happens if it's a quick claim deed? In other words, what if it doesn't include a warranty that you own the full property? Generally, when you convey property, you're going to want a warranty deed that says, hey, I own what I'm telling you I'm selling. But sometimes there's a quick claim deed. And as we'll see, whether that includes you know, this representation that you're able to convey what you, you said can be a matter of intent. So warranty clause is something that is, as I said, included in many deeds, says that the grantee will receive what has been granted in the deed. In other words, I have the power to convey this because this is my property. Now, if you don't have the power to convey, and so there is no effective grant of the property, then there can be damages. So they said they would sell you this house, turned out it wasn't theirs, you can sue them for that. But you can also get a stopple by deed. So imagine that somebody sold you the house they were living in, as it turned out, it didn't belong to them. It belonged to their mother. Shortly after the sale, which was invalid because they didn't own it, their mother dies and leaves them the house. 
Well, now they have the house, which is what you were trying to buy anyway. So you may be able to get that through the doctrine of after acquired title. So they now have what they purported to convey at that time. And so they now have to give it to you. The Dewey Doctrine works in a little bit similar way in that it basically says, Dewey thought or said that they had the full property. As it turned out, they only had a one half mineral interest. Miller Link thought it was buying a one half mineral interest. Therefore, as long as Dewey has some one half mineral interest, it can sell to Miller Lake. Miller Lake gets that amount. Now note that that intent can apply Dewey even if there isn't a warranty. It's a little bit easy. It's a warranty deed case. If it's not a warranty deed case, we have to look at the intent. Was the intent really to say, hey, this is my mineral interest? Okay, how does a Dewey problem get created? Well, let's imagine this situation. Olive, the original owner, sells to Anna by warranty deed and reserves one half of the minerals. Okay, so far so good. Olive has a half, Anna has a half. But Anna doesn't wanna hire a lawyer. So when it comes time for her to sell, she just uses Olive's deed. Olive's deed obviously doesn't mention any exception for Olive. And so, but Anna wants to reserve some of the mineral interest for herself. So she says, I'm just reserving a one quarter mineral. So she gives this deed to Barbara, selling by warranty deed and reserves a quarter mineral interest for herself. Okay, again, ask yourself, what did the grantee think they were getting? What did Barbara in this case think she was getting? Well, she thought she was getting a three quarter mineral interest because she, there's no mention of an exception for Olive. All that's there is the reservation of a quarter mineral interest for Anna. So Barbara assumes, hey, I get three quarters of the mineral interest. Okay, now apply doing. What happens? Well, we're supposed to give priority to Barbara's interest. So we're gonna try to give her a three quarter mineral interest. Do we have three quarters of a mineral interest to give? No, we don't. So what do we have to give? Well, we can give Anna's entire interest and that's a one half mineral interest. So Barbara thinks she's getting three quarter mineral interest, but instead she's gonna get a one half mineral interest, all of Anna's share, and then for the one quarter extra that she thought she was getting, what does she get? Well, then she can rely on the normal means of enforcing a warranty deed. She is going to be able to have a lawsuit for one quarter of the mineral interest. Okay. What is Anna left with? Well, she's left with zero mineral interest, right? Because there is none left for her after she, Olive still keeps her half and then the half that Anna had goes entirely to Barbara to try and satisfy her. But she's also gonna be on the hook for a one quarter mineral interest lawsuit. Okay, let's follow this one step further, looking at the doing problem on page 597 in your text. So again, Olive conveys to Anna, reserving a one half mineral interest. So at this time, it's just Olive, one half, Anna, one half. Anna conveys to Barbara by warranty deed, but doesn't mention Olive's interest, reserving a quarter interest for herself. Okay, so Olive still has one half because we can't change Olive's interest, right? Without, she's not in that transaction between Anna and Barbara. So she still gets one half. Anna, as we said, has, is gonna have zero minus a one quarter mineral interest lawsuit. And Barbara is going to have one half. She'll get as close to three quarters as she can, plus a quarter mineral interest lawsuit against Anna. Okay, now let's make it a little bit more confusing. And this is, if you're going through old records of deeds, it can get this confusing frequently. So 
Let's imagine that Barbara conveys to Carlos, okay? So now it's Barbara, Barbara is selling the property. So you're going through these chain of title. You see Olive had it originally. Anna created a doing problem. And so you've got this different mineral interest in lawsuits. But let's say there never was a lawsuit, right? Now let's say that Barbara conveys to Carlos and she accepts a half mineral interest in Olive and a quarter mineral interest in Anna. So Barbara follows the practice you're supposed to and accepts the, the uh, other mineral interest. And accepting the one half mineral interest in Olive, that's correct, good job, right? But she also accepts a quarter mineral interest in Anna. Well, what happened there? How did this turn of events happen? Because I thought we said that after the Dewey rule, Anna actually had zero. So why is Barbara accepting a quarter mineral interest in Anna? Well, the reason this can happen is maybe at stage two here, maybe Barbara really knew, despite what was written in the deed, that Olive had the one half. And so maybe she thought she was just buying a quarter mineral interest. Now we're not normally allowed to look to evidence outside of the deed, so that may not be legally relevant, but that may have been what was happening here, is that actually Barbara knew she was just buying a quarter mineral interest. So by the paper trail, it looks like she was trying to buy a three quarter mineral interest, but maybe she actually knew that it was really a just a one quarter mineral interest, okay? Alternatively, maybe she found this problem and unlike you all, she didn't know the doing rule. She had no idea. And so she thought, oh shoot, you know, Anna really messed with me here. I thought I was buying a three quarter mineral interest. I only got a one quarter mineral interest, but you know what, no hard feelings. I'm not gonna be, I'm gonna be the bigger person when it's time to sell my interest, I'm going to still accept her share. Okay, so now you know better than Barbara, you know about the Dewey rule, what actually happens as a result of this? Well, in some ways it'd be easy to say, okay, forget the whole Dewey rule, let's just say Olive had a half, Anna had a quarter, now Carlos, Carlos has Barbara's quarter. You could say that, but we know the Dewey rule applies. So probably, probably what happens at this point, Olive is still going to have her one half, right? That doesn't change. Anna is still gonna have her zero minus a quarter mineral interest because that doesn't, uh, that doesn't change either. It can't change from the transaction between Barbara and Carlos. Now, the complicated question is, well then what do Barbara and Carlos own? Seems that Barbara was intending to convey to Carlos just her, what she thought was her one quarter mineral interest. So maybe he is just left with that, but that leaves something that Barbara, you know, didn't uh, reserve, but also didn't grant, which is that she's left with everything that she didn't grant here, one quarter mineral interest plus a one quarter lawsuit. Okay, now if you look at this record of just three transactions, you can see how complicated these doing problems can get, particularly if the parties making them maybe didn't fully understand the doing rule or the things that can go wrong when you forget to make exceptions. So doing problems can be a big problem for people looking through land title uh, records. Okay, now that first question is really an answer to the second question, which is now if Carlos wants to convey and retain an interest, how would you draft the language? Okay, the basic answer is the way to avoid a doing problem is either you have to state exactly what you're conveying, 
accurately, or you have to account for the 100%. So when Olive and Anna own that half mineral interest each, then you would want to have Anna say, Anna, who owns a one half mineral interest, conveys to Barbara by warranty deed a one quarter mineral interest. That leaves the other quarter mineral interest with Anna. Or Anna could account for everything. Anna conveys minerals with full warranty, accepting the one half mineral interest previously reserved by Olive. So she's accepting the interest previously created and reserving one quarter of all minerals. So either state what you're conveying or account for 100% of the interest. 